Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. And in this episode, we are going to be carrying on straight where we left off in the last one, and that will be to set up our first ever interplanetary colony. Using the two Juna class vessels that I did construct in the last episode. Now, there were a lot of great name suggestions left in comments in the last episode, but there was one that really stuck out to me. And I liked it as soon as I saw it and I thought it was a fantastic name. And that is going to be the RSAS Horus. Now I feel like the Egyptian gods don't really get enough love, especially when it comes to naming conventions in series like this. I've never used them before personally. So I feel like the Horus might be quite a nice step away from what I have done previously. And Horus being the Egyptian god of the sun and war, I believe, obviously Mars, Juna, war all of that kind of stuff i feel like that is a nice fit and yeah i just i really like the name i really like the name so thank you for that suggestion and i feel like we are going to call it that anyway we have now burnt over two hydras with the juna the original one that no 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 the poor wait no i i'm getting myself mixed up the juna is the one with cargo with passengers on it this one yes the one that is on screen at the moment the Horus, though, has completed its burn over to Hydras. And I need to remember not to call them Venus in this episode, because I kept doing that in the last episode, because I was a little bit silly. I did it twice very early on, and I think that confused my smooth brain a little bit. Anyway, with the Juna, we are going to once again do a bit of a spiral burn and burn our Apple apps around road to be much higher than it originally was. Because the burns for getting over to Hydras are going to take such a long time, in order for us to not be burning for our entire orbit, well, we want to have our orbital period to be as long as possible so that we are burning in the correct direction for as long as possible. And once again, we can see that we have made an encounter with Hydra. So this one, I don't need to do a deep space maneuver in order to get over to, but with the horse, I did need to do one of those, but I'm not going to show that because, well, well, we'll just show them when they get there. And here we are. We are now at Hydrus with the first Juna class ship, the Horus, I believe. <laughs> I really need to remember which one's which. And we are going to be starting our burn to capture into a low Hydrus orbit. Well, eventually a low Hydrus orbit is going to take multiple passes in order to bring this down to a position where I am going to be happy to leave this. So the trajectory that we took with this vessel is a little bit different than we took with the one with the crew on board. Because I wanted to get this to Hydra's first, I wanted to set up the entire colony before the crew arrived. So this actually only took 100 days to get to Hydra's. The other one, the Juna, the one with the crew on board, took about 150 days. So that gives me 50 days in order to set up everything on the surface of Hydrus so that we can just bring that crew down on the swordfish and they can have a fully set up base pretty much as soon as they arrive, which will be very nice. But we have now got ourselves into a nice low orbit and we are going to decouple all of the colony modules. And there we go, all six at once. There are six on board here. We've got five that are exactly the same that are using Natia's near future launch vehicles for those cargo bays. Very, very, very cool. Very heavily inspired by Nessus from Nessus's Saturn mission. I think they used the same, but they do look awesome and they are a great way for bringing cargo down. But what we're going to be doing to begin with is setting up the first module of the base. Now, this is going to be our power module. And the reason why this is the first one is because I couldn't figure out how I was going to move this about on the surface. So wherever this lands, that is going to be where it ends up staying. Now, I did aim to go in the lakes of Hydrus, which aren't always covered in water, but they tend to be a little bit flatter than elsewhere on Hydrus. And that would have been nice because this is going to be quite an expansive base. And obviously, the further out it gets, the more that wonky terrain is going to interrupt me. Unfortunately, though, trajectories was being a little bit weird and I landed somewhere completely different from where it was going to tell me or where it told me that I was supposed to land, which was a bit of a shame. So 
We are on a bit of a slope, but it's not the worst slope in the world. It could have gone a much, well, it could have, it could have gone much, much, much worse, is what I really should say. But we have now brought down the second module. This is going to be our ore converting unit, which will take ore and turn that into liquid fuel and oxidizer and monopropellant and liquid hydrogen, any, any kind of fuel that we are gonna possibly want. And that will be useful for when we want to relaunch the swordfish and when we want to launch stuff from the surface of Hydrus into Hydrus's orbit. And you can see this does have a couple or four wheels on it so that we can maneuver this around. We are going to be bringing down a dedicated rover though in the next module that I bring down that will be able to move all of the other base parts together. This one was slightly different in the fact that it had its own wheels on board. But there we go, we have docked these two parts together and I'm going to remove those wheels later on. So the first part, I didn't even talk what that was about. It was a power module. It has a very large fission reactor on there, which is going to be more than sufficient to power the base for all of eternity as soon as we set up uraninite production into enriched uranium. However, I do have something a little bit different on there as well. We want to test out some new technology far away from roads so we don't cause any sort of calamities or catastrophes on the surface of roads. So at the very top of that reactor module, which we can see right now as the other module is being parachuted down, there is a fusion reactor. And we did bring along a little bit of liquid deuterium from Rhodes so that we can actually power that for about a year. I cannot produce any deuterium yet, but that is something that we will be looking into doing. And then hopefully we may even be able to run that fusion reactor on top of the base for eternity as well, which will be very nice. Anyway, this is the first of two command modules that is also going to contain all of the storage for the base. Yes. We needed so much storage that I had to bring two of these down. And this is the dedicated rover that is going to be moving around all of the base positions. I brought that down on board one of the command modules because it did fit rather nicely into the nose section of the Horus, which is what we have just brought down now. I do have to say, docking these together was a complete nightmare. This is why this video took 24 hours, why I had 24 hours of footage. It was all of this faffing around, fiddling around, docking on the surface. Now I don't mind docking in space anymore, but docking on the surface, when everything has to be perfectly lined up and you can't wiggle around with RCS or do anything like that, no, it's, it's a lot harder and it's a lot more tricky. Obviously, the last base that I did set up on the surface of Armstrong, that was using MKS flexor tubes, which you can just get Kerbals to connect those together. I wanted to do this base slightly different. No, this base I wanted to actually put together and it was all some sort of rigid structure. That way, it looks a bit better. If I'm going to be completely honest, I think this looks a lot better, but it does take a lot more time a lot more planning and a lot more effort to actually make one of these because when you get down to the surface and things don't dock together properly, well, yeah, yeah it's, it's just annoying. I had to do an awful lot of testing for this. So yeah, I, I keep bringing back 24 hours filming for, for this entire episode. That doesn't include any of the designing or any of the testing of this mission. And let me tell you, I did have to I did have to test this an awful lot because we have so many different functional parts of this mission. We have now opened up the first one of those cargo bay modules and they have propellers on board. What I was originally going to be doing was using some of the orbital maneuvering engines from this stage, which is the irradiance engine from OPT Spaceplanes mod, to bring us down into Hydrus's atmosphere. And then when we got low enough, those propellers would activate with the intake atmosphere that we can gain from the atmosphere of Hydrus, and then we could gently lower this craft down without the need of parachutes. However, when I did test this, and I did test this on a live stream, it was nice to have the parachutes as well as a backup. And actually, as it turns out, every single one of these that I launched and landed on Hydrus, I did have to use the parachutes for, not because I couldn't slow down fast enough, or not because the craft flipped in the wrong direction. The reason why I had to use them is the propellers being stored in those nose bits of that cargo bay were a little bit janky. And sometimes 
When I brought it down, they thought they were occluded. Other times, they just would not fire up because they did not have enough intake atmosphere until we were about a thousand meters off the surface of Hydrus, which is really, really concerning when you're coming down at about 80 meters per second and suddenly nothing, well, the engines start turning on, yeah, no, it, it would have been a bit better. So just for my own peace of mind and for my own sanity, I decided to use parachutes on all of them. Anyway, this is going to be the first of the Umbra Space Industries modular colonization systems part that we bring in. Now, this is going to be a refinery where we're going to take all of the raw resources that we're going to extract from the surface of Hydrus, turn things like minerals into chemicals, metallic ore into metals, all of that kind of good stuff. And then eventually what we will do is we will turn all of that processed materials into material kits, specialized parts, all of the stuff that we are going to need to be able to construct spacecraft on the surface of Hydrus so we can build new base modules, which will be great. Anyway, we have now docked the first Tundra part to the base. Now it is time to bring down the remaining four Yes, there's another, <laughs> there's another four modules. I had six things around, six things around the core of the Horus to begin with. One of them was obviously the power module and the ore processing module. And yeah, we had another five. So with, four, with the first one down even, we can begin working on the next four. But there we go. That was just a, a little bit of a section of this video to highlight the fact that these can actually fly once they have deposited their payload so we can move them away. They do have about 70 parts per one of those cargo pods. So I did want to move them away before landing another one. That is why the entire mission was 740 parts. It was huge and it was really laggy and it took such a long time, but you know, it's, it's, it's done now. And I think in the future, if I am ever going to send a colony all in one go again, a colony in a box, as I think I called it in the last episode, what I will do, rather than sending the actual modules, I will send a craft that has the capability to build them once it arrives at its destination, and also bring enough material kits and specialized parts in order to do so. And obviously, in the last episode, I learned that I needed about 700,000 to build the entire colony, because I built the entire colony in orbit around Rodor. Well, the Kraken said no, but you know, I, I got the parts all there. So, next time I go on a big interplanetary voyage to somewhere different, say, I think Gateway, I do want to set up something over at Gateway before this series ends, we will send a massive ship that contains about a million material kits, maybe something like 100,000, 200,000 specialized parts, and that should be enough to send a colony over. And it will be a lot better for my frames that way. It might not look quite as cool, but I've done it now. I don't need to do that again. There we go. We've docked a new module. I, I think we've docked a couple whilst I've been talking about the next mission that we are going to be doing. But anyway, with that now connected, we can start moving these command modules because I wanted these to come on the side here. Now, these were a little bit more difficult to dock than the other modules because I had the rover attached to the Tundra parts allowing me to dock because the way that I designed the landing legs, I could keep the rover on. However, because these were a lot lower to the ground in order to make those Ranger storage modules look good once they are deployed, I had to get rid of the rover before I could dock. So if it moved ever so slightly when the rover was gone. Well, I had no way of moving that back into the correct position. So it was a little bit annoying, but we did eventually get those two modules docked onto the sides of those two Tundra parts. And now this is the last one. And I think this is an agricultural support unit. Basically, this is going to take all of the materials that we need in order to make sure that our kerbals are fed and watered and oxygenated and are not going to die on the surface of Hydrus. If I'm <laughs> yes, that's what this is for, it's to keep them alive. And with that, that is actually going to be the last module that we sent over on the Horus. This is the entire Horus now disassembled and reassembled on the surface of Hydrus and has been put down and we can deploy those ranger modules, extend the staircase, and the base is done.
I come to you again now asking for your help. So obviously we've set up this base down on the surface of Hydras, but it does not have a name. So once again, I'm going to ask you if you would so kindly leave a name suggestion in the comments and we'll see what I like and maybe even put that to a poll this time. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that, but I do like doing, I do like handing the naming of things over to you, the community that watches these videos, because I think it's a nice way for you to get involved with the series. But anyway, what we are doing right now is bringing the Juna to its final destination. Yes, we have arrived at Hydrus, and we are going to once again capture this into a nice low orbit around the planet. That way, when I do attempt a landing with the Swordfish and with some of the Material Kits pods that we do have on the side of here, well, it's going to be a lot easier to actually land where I want to. So what we are going to be doing right now is actually deploying one of these Material Kit pods. I've brought one of these down before the Swordfish because I just really wanted to see how these would land. Now, when I was flying this, I designed this quite a long time ago, and I completely forgot that when I needed to land this, I needed to fire up the engines. And I did, I, I did remember that I did need it to slow down because I saw my speed was 15 meters per second. But unfortunately, I started that burn a little bit too late, which is why a lot of the engines on the bottom of that little pod got destroyed. So it wasn't a complete disaster, and we did manage to get those material kits and specialized parts over to the base, but we did lose a few parts of that bit of machinery, which was never, it's never good when explosions happen. Or conversely, you might think it's always good when explosions happen, because, you know, it's Kerbal Space Program. Explosions happen all the time. We live for the explosions in this game. Anyway, we, did, we, we got that down. I was going off on a bit of a tangent there. Now what we're going to be doing is attempting to land the Swordfish, the single stage to orbit space plane that is very good at flying around Hydrus. So you can see on the left hand side of the screen, we're only using intake atmosphere. We also use electric charge, but there is a nuclear reactor in this space plane that means that we can fly this indefinitely. So it's going to be great for going on any kinds of excursions around the surface of Hydrus. And there we can see we have just flown past the colony, the yet to be named colony. Yes, that I asked for naming suggestions. And this was quite easy to actually fly around the surface of Hydrus. Hydrus has got a very weird atmosphere, I feel. It's very thick. Not not super thick, but it's it's about the same sort of volume, pressure, probably, it's the word I'm looking for, as say like road or kerbin, and it just kind of dissipates quite quickly though, so it's really easy to get to orbit, although that being said, I can fly this plane at about 25,000 meters quite comfortably, so maybe it doesn't dissipate quite quickly, maybe it just has a really thick atmosphere, and it just finishes shortly, I, I don't know, I'll have to look into it a little bit, because it is weird, the atmosphere around Hydrus, and I've always struggled a little bit making conventional rockets take off from the surface to get back to orbit because you are fighting a lot of drag a lot of the way. But with a single stage to orbit space plane that uses that atmosphere for its advantage, well, it can, get, it can almost make orbit without actually burning any liquid fuel, which is fantastic. But we were able to get down to the base. We stopped very close to the base. I was actually a little bit concerned that the brakes weren't going to slow us down in time before we ended up crashing into the side of the base. That would have been a bit of a disaster, but luckily we did manage to stop maybe about 20 meters away. So we got a Kerbal out, we planted that all-important flag, and we got rid of any useless things that were on the base. Like the docking ports, we're not going to need to dock them anymore, so we got rid of those. And we built a lawnmower, or oh, that's what people on the Discord seem to think this looked like. I did post a picture of this on the Discord. If you don't know about the Discord, there will be a link in the description of this video. Great place, go check it out. And yes, no, people thought this looked like a lawnmower. What this actually was, was a device to build a runway at a later date. But unfortunately, when we constructed this using extra planetary launch pads, well, someone forgot to put the brakes on this thing. And because it wasn't controllable by a probe core, we could only control this with a Kerbal, I had to get that poor Kerbal out and chase it down the side of the hill as it was driving away and we had no way to stop it, which was rather unfortunate, but we did manage to get that Kerbal on board after what looked like breaking his neck because that was a very weird landing on the stairs at one point. 
And yes, we did manage to stop it, and that is now going to go away, and in my mind, that is going to be digging up a nice area for a runway at a later date. I didn't need that vessel, I just thought it would be cool to, you know, have a vessel that looked like it had a bulldozer kind of thing on the front, and then that way we can picture it in our heads that that's going to shift dirt. My name for it was the Dirt Mover, but no, we're definitely going to go for the Lawn Mower. It, it cuts the grass around the base keeps it nice and pristine and in good condition. I'm not even sure if there's grass on Hydrus. I, I don't think there is. There is flora on some of the planets, but Hydrus is a little bit desolate. It's very rocky. I think it's quite akin to Venus, if I'm going to be honest. But anyway, whilst I've been talking about cutting the grass on Hydrus, weird tangent there, what I did build was a nuclear processing unit, which also has place or a place to store supplies, because I forgot, in my infinite wisdom, to actually have anywhere on the surface base that would contain supplies and mulch, which is what we need in order to keep our Kerbals alive. Really dumb of me. But luckily, with the material kits and specialised parts that we brought down, we were able to build up that nuclear processing unit, whack a storage container on the end that was going to have all of the supplies that we could ever want. And obviously, we did bring some supplies down on this space plane, on the Swordfish, and we transferred those over to the base using US-sized local logistics. Now, I did want to go on a bit of a journey with this space plane, because I, when I was bringing this down, I thought I saw some big lakes. And lo and behold, I did. I did not actually realize that there were these ginormous lakes on Hydrus. I thought the lake biomes were just flat, but didn't actually really have any water. So this was a bit of a surprise to me when I came and found this. And I thought, yes, we'll go on an excursion. We'll go explore the local area because there is something else that we do want to go and see as well. When we sent the Hydrus AEPM mission over, caught. 20 episodes ago. I can't remember how long ago it was. Well, we scanned the surface of Hydrus and we came up with, well, we found some interesting things. Apparently, there may be some floaty rocks hidden around somewhere. So on the way back, I am going to be flying a little bit lower than when I came over because I want to see if there are those floaty rocks. I want to see them up close and see what they, what mysteries they may hold for our Kerbals. Now, one thing, I, I, I know the floaty rocks here because I've seen them before in the previous Coming Home, but one thing that I was potentially considering on planning on doing was maybe making a base on one of those, but it wasn't going to be this base because that would have been a nightmare to land all of the modules perfectly on it. But I think at a later date, I might make some sort of helicarrier style device that can lift up modules and take them and land them on top of one of these floating rocks. And I think that would be a really cool idea for another surface base on Hydrus. Not that we need another one, but you know, just do it for style points, really. Because <laughs> that would be damn cool, if I'm going to be particularly honest. But we did manage to land the swordfish on top of one of those floaty rocks. And we got a Kerbal out and we managed to get a bit of science from that as well. And apparently, the floaty rock, ro rocks, floaty rocks, <laughs> having a stir fry up there apparently. The floating rocks are repellent to all magnets, I think the science fluff did say. So that's a bit of a weird property of those rocks. But as we can see, we are now bringing the swordfish back to the base. And oh boy, has the lawnmower been busy whilst we were gone. We have dug an entire runway and somehow managed to build some hangars as well. Yes, I have been messing around with Kerbal Constructs and we we have got a place to store the swordfish and the lawnmower, which looks very nice, and a place to land. But that will be it for this episode. In the next one, we're going to make sure that this base is self-sufficient. And is it Vasto time? I think it's Vasto time. Anyway, I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.